Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Woke War 3. What I'd like to call the final warning before the black swan event of black swan events here in the United States of America. Right now, what occurred in Baltimore was that the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after a ship collided with it. The true black swan event I've been discussing for months is coming very soon. And the last time I've spoke about an event like this happening, it was back when Israel-Palestine began. Now we are on the precipice of a massive solar eclipse coming April 8th. And that's why I have waters above here on my channel today to explain to every single one of you what to expect. This video was recorded a few days ago before I went to Australia. And what's ironic about this bridge is that it's actually named after the individual who made the United States National Anthem. Just a fun fact to keep in the back of your minds, as we believe this eclipse will be bad for the United States. And in addition, to give additional context to this eclipse and this black swan event that we expect to happen soon. There was a massive terror event that occurred in Moscow, I believe just yesterday or two days ago. And that is going to be tremendous context for the information you're about to be exposed to. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this might be one of the spiciest videos I've ever made. It might just get me kicked off the internet. But it's important that we tell you all the truth. As all I'm doing is protecting all of you from what may occur in the coming days. Now guys, on to the main event. Good morrow my hooligans and delinquents. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. As waters above has been summoned to bring the waters below for all of you to see. I don't know if I like that one. Is that good bro? Is that good? Is that alright? Water, waters below is urine. It's a yearn. <laughs> it's it's piss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna give you all this piss poor content for the day with waters above, my friends. But in all seriousness, uh, waters, thank you for being here. Uh, I have you here for a very important reason. That, that's your that's your intro. Are you serious? No, no, no. Yeah, bro. Come on now. Don't ruin it. I was flowing. You're just over here talking shit. <laughs> no way. But, no, no, oh. dude, I don't care anymore. I don't know if you knew this, but I retired from XRP. I made my last XRP video. It's on my channel. It's three hours. What? Long. It's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I know you made this three hour video, but I didn't know you. What What does that mean? Can you tell me right now? Because I feel like I'm yeah. fucking flustered. Yeah, dude, it's it's my uh, magnum opus. It's my fuck all this bullshit. XRP is chosen. You're going to make money if you just hold and be a fucking adult. That is my my declaration, essentially. It's like, I've been making content on this for five years. I feel like I've beaten the, uh, I've beaten all the juice from this that I can squeeze. Anything more is just me trying to milk the community for content. And it's that's not valuable anymore. Because it's it's like I, I felt like I got to the point where it's getting repetitive. There's nothing new. What the fuck is new? What's new, bro? Oh, oh, Brad went somewhere. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised they're not like flight tracking this guy's jet or something. You know, it's like, dude, I might just do that. That that might be my new channel. Just follow Brad Garlinghouse private jet while he makes carbon neutral technology <laughs> so that we can all have carbon taxes up the ass. That's yeah. Gonna- a new channel no but um i'm that doesn't mean i'm not going to still talk about ripple and xrp it just means i'm going to also talk about things that i think are more important like the coming banking crisis that is clearly afoot um, yeah how to prepare for that um becoming the new one percent you know more free and stuff like that and um just things i think are are essential for the community's success mm-hmm. uh, believe it or not The video that I'm posting before I upload this is titled My Problem with the XRP Community and a big problem that the XRP Community has. 
and mm-hmm. it specifically talks about how you know as much as we want to sit here and pretend that um not pretend as much as we want to sit here and say xrp is not a security the xrp community invests and acts like it is right there's no building going on on xrp not really Mm -hmm. like there is there's a conference in australia that i'm going to in literally 10 hours (laughs) Um, we're talking about the builders but it's like over the past five years it's not xrp's show it's been solana's show and right now it's solana's show it, it, they have over a million daily active wallets. XRP has nineteen thousand. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's like teaching the community that if you want real, true value aside from just like Ripple mm-hmm. coming to this thing, like do some and stop treating it like a fucking security. It's not a security. It's a decentralized network that you can use. Yeah, you know, so. That's really you, what it is. Um, you just brought up a great point, man. Like, I feel like yeah. way too many people complain, but then they themselves don't have any skills or know how to do any of this stuff. Like, that's why I'm very cautious with my words. Like, yeah. I'm very clear when I delineate, when I'm looking at some altcoin charts where I'm like, yeah, this doesn't look so great, the structure and like the patterns that I'm looking at. But, and I'm not talking about XRP, by the way, I'm just giving an example, a general example. But then at the same time, I preface it by saying, you know, I'm not a dev. I don't know how to. I'm. I'm not like a blockchain technologist. I don't have. No, an idea. me. And me so either. many people. So many me people either. have these like. And it's also, I think, there's too much comparison. You know, there's so many people that say the same thing, and you probably heard it a lot lately, where they're like, "I wish I put my money in Solana instead of XRP," and I'm like, "If you're saying things like that, that's like you. You never." prepared yourself before you even put the money in the market dude then. they don't like realize that they don't realize that they're the indicator <laughs> <laughs> it's like i look Damn, at that's a clear it, pill right there and that's 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 what it is they're the indicator i look at you you're mad because solana's up you want to get in there okay leave and then xrp is going to go and then it's the same retail investor the poverty cycle yeah you know, that's what i like to call it but in all seriousness, um, I'll still be talking about XRP and Ripple, bro. Like, of of course, but it's it's going to be more branched out into a lot of things that I think are unbelievably important for making money. Because, bro, we're we're in 2024. I think you you see the writing on the wall. The world is going into a um, volatile time, a, a potentially dangerous time too. Yeah, it's been, and and, and it's it's time we got serious about freeing ourselves or else uh, enjoy the perpetual slavery and the bugs that you're going to be force fed. And, you know, all the 15 boosters that you're going to inevitably <laughs> need when they knock on your door and it's fine, you know, just drink your cactus water. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that means. No, you know? brother. I think it's, I think it's interesting to hear that you're, um you're switching things up and that's, that's a sign of your, you're not giving up, but then you're also, you're evolving. And I think that that's, yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing that I had to go through with when I created my expansion mastermind course, which I don't know if I ever spent much time talking with you about this, but like, because I did it a while ago, I know that I know the push of realizing that maybe the crypto degen 100% like meme coin coin lords are not my family. Like they're not my, no, they're not, you have to, and I, I, I need to, yeah. I, as a creator and as a leader, I cannot complain about them. I can't yeah. talk shit about them. I need to start pushing myself in a direction that's more mature to separate myself from them. So that's what I did. And then mm-hmm. I created the decoding mastermind and did it again. And I'm, I'm continuing to pivot over time. So it's, it's dope to hear what you're, what you're, you know, your evolution. And, and to everybody at home, it's important that you understand that this moment now is, is up to all of you to seize. Um, my, me personally, I've never been here. The one to tell you all to invest in absolute shit coins to make money. Like the vast majority, if not any crypto, I've almost every crypto I've ever talked about. I was very confident in the fundamentals and the price action. Like we, we invest in high quality, fundamentally strong cryptos at immaculate entry points during peak bear markets, peak bear markets to ensure security, you know, and because because I don't I don't dude, I don't follow the short term charts. Oh, 
I don't know fuck all about TA like that. Like, can I mm-hmm. read a chart and can you do some analysis? And I understand, yes. I don't need, but I, I don't, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to yeah. live like that. But I can get an entry points at high quality coins that are gonna go up quite a lot better than the best of them. Like I was in AGIX at eight cents. Mm-hmm. Look at where look at where it went. You know. And, and that's I'm all that matters. Here. Like all that matters is, is can can I walk away from this thing profitable? And and that's that's what I need to hammer home to everyone watching before we get into the meat and potatoes. It's like you can't come here when I'm speaking with waters in a one hour long conversation and take out of context years of analysis and fundamentals and 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 right. research. And investing principles and then say, oh, he said it was going to go up maybe. And you lost me money because I made a mistake. It's yeah. like, fuck you. Leave. I don't want you here. I don't want yeah. those people here. That, that, this is a high level conversation, not for low quality minds. And it's, and it's kind of unfortunate that you almost do have to remind people of the truth often. Like, I, I feel like, why do I have to remind people that I was buying Bitcoin at $8,000? Like, why? Because Be- they don't have because, that context. Because they yeah. just got in in 2024 wondering yeah. why the fucking cat is making more ROI than XRP. Right. You know? like, And it's, it's just the sign of where we're at. And it's a sign <laughs> that this market didn't mature at all. Like, between, I actually said this in my last video. I was like, letting people know. This the fact that we still have the same kind of vibe of 2021 is yeah. actually the most disappointing part of what we're experiencing today. It's, like, it's that is so disappointing. Not because there's opportunities for people to make money. Like I would never take that away from somebody. If you're able I, to make money in this yeah. market, that's beautiful. I know people yeah. got kids, people got like shit to take care of, and like I day trading DJ shit coins dude. might be what was that? I hate degen culture, bro. I hate it. Yeah, like I, 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 I'm just saying, like I, I get it for what it is. Like I can't shit on everyone because I know that there's an investment thesis behind some of it. But yeah, ultimately, like, is it something you could park all your wealth in and go asleep, go to sleep and feel good, like in the middle of the night? Probably not. You'd be waking up checking your phone when you're in this kind of stuff because it gets rug pulled all the time. But anyways, yeah, it's like it's interesting that I've been here for three years now actually it's third year anniversary of the channel was like just a couple of weeks ago and you've been doing this for a while right That's amazing i appreciate you you've been doing this for like five six years right man yeah bro 2019. 2019 there you go so it's like it's it's unfortunate to almost always have to bring up the context of the big picture and we should definitely talk about that more today because i think that's what people are going to gather that's the most valuable between two people like us discussing, you know, our investment thesis and our mindset and how to navigate what's going on in this world, because this might be the only asset class where you're, you're considered quote unquote wrong for making money. Dude, dude. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's, this, this, is, this is my frustration and I, I'm glad you brought it up because I'm going to pivot beautifully waters uh i love you bro i'm going to pivot beautifully (laughs) to this this is my favorite piece of content that i've received over the past week Mm. imagine having this mentality and trying to get rich from crypto this dude randomly on my instagram said the fuck bro i trusted you crypto was in the shitter i lost over a thousand dollars investing in xrp and ethereum this is fucking bullshit. I like this, this dude comment. Posted this a couple days ago, and I'm just like, I'm just like, bro, who the fuck are you? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a sign that he should have put this thousand dollars somewhere into a business, a something that could cash flow. Him. You're bitching to me over a thousand dollars, and you want to get rich from crypto? Get out! Leave! I don't want you here. Don't watch my channel. Like this is this is bro. I wish this I this share. stuff comes out during the I bull wish run the most. Though, I could man. share. I wish I could share what I've seen. Lost in my portfolio in 2018. Lost in 2020. Regained in 2021. 
lost in 22 and you're bitching about a thousand fucking dollars bro get a ps5 and a couple games and just like eat the bugs while you wear your your little gopro and your and your metaverse mask and your oculus and just you know go do your thing like this isn't for you what's yeah. wrong with you like like we saw a five percent dip in bitcoin and people are bitching why are people bitching that's not even a crash yeah, like a well, it's because people it, are very people are uh, very directionally sentiment driven. So it's like when we're up, everyone's like up only, boys. And then when we're bro, down, like, it's like everyone's gone. What's gonna happen when an actual crash comes? I know, <laughs> and it's my well, fault because we're gonna see C, we're gonna I'm see bullish. the C nineteen crash again. We saw uh, what that it, did. Like it, exactly, yeah, it was a liquidation ritual. No, but I'm bullish for 2024. But we crashed. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll keep making money being wrong. Cool. That's what it is. That's what it is. But anyways, brother, I had to share this. And I want to know, down in the comments below, everyone, what do you think about this mindset? And Bernie, Andy, I, I'm not here to pick on you. But you clearly had no problem having these comments towards me. So this is what I deal with every day from hundreds of people everywhere. You could take it on the chin. And we can have a conversation. Yeah. Right. Because now I'm friends with Joey Swole, bro. I don't know if you know who this this dude is. He's a fitness influencer. He's one of my No, friends. I have no idea. And he calls people out at the gym for doing stupid shit. Like just fuck shit, dude. Yeah. Like like, like posting like like bending over in front of some dude and acting like, oh, he looked at my ass. And he just oh, calls so the, he calls people out at the gym and he's XRP army. And in the words of Joey Swole, Bernie, you need to do better. <laughs> you need to do better. Anyways, Waters. Now let's get into some content for the day. Um, beautiful, beautiful intro. <laughs> beautiful segue, right? I think yeah. this, this is good. Um, let's get into the last time. We were on our channel, or we were on this channel. We talked about um, the Bitcoin ETF being a sell the news event, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they don't understand that the news was sold immediately after the Bitcoin ETF. Yeah, there was, a, there was an 8% daily candle the day after. So yeah, that's not bullish. That's not, uh, I, exactly. But... What occurred afterwards had everyone kind of confused. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I remember clearly you expected more of a further pullback kind of into February, March after that. Clearly, we've had a new all-time high in Bitcoin mm -hmm. and all coins have been um, much more bullish recently as well. What do you make of what happened in this market how do we course correct, look at where we're at now with all the new data mm -hmm. and context that we have and go from here and analyzing this market? What happened? Yeah. So there was a play by play here. And I know that in crypto world, sometimes things like we're blind to it because it's so fast moving and there's so many different analysts out there that people are watching. And the play by play here was pretty simple. We were covering this specifically this January 9th date, which was a date tied specifically to Bitcoin. And I was showing in, I believe, even on our last podcast together, if not the last one, a couple before that, it was showing a pattern of how we rise into January 8th, and then we tend to get a correction. And whatever daily candle close we get on January 8th tends to be the high of the month. And that was actually exactly how it went. And then Bitcoin went on to have a 20% pullback or so into the Jan January 23rd, January 24th-ish. And then... You, sorry, Waters, to cut you off. Before you continue, can you actually bring up the Bitcoin chart? While you yeah, sure, sure. I'll make, it nice and, I'll make it nice and simple for everyone by pulling up a chart. One second. Yep. <clears throat> In preparation for all of this, we talked about the specific date of January 8th. This was before the ETFs were even launched. I made a post on Twitter and on YouTube, actually, which I don't do too often. And it was a decode talking about this, this specific date. And all throughout leading up to that, there was a lot of these like fake news events. 
I'm sure you remember them as well, where people mm-hmm. were saying the ETF is approved, yes. it's launched. It yeah. was all nonsense. And that was going on pretty much all throughout November, December, leading into the new year. And I talked about this January 8th date because it was a pattern that I was seeing in many years in the Bitcoin chart. I believe it was like at least nine out of the 14 years we would get to January 8th. And for whatever reason, we would correct after that. And then in a lot of iterations, we would actually stay lower than whatever the January 8th uh, microcycle top was all the way until sometimes as late as June or May. And in this case, the play-by-play of the specific day to the specific price target was hit. And then we had the ETF launch on this day, which was the 10th, I believe. The following day, the market was slightly bullish. But then overall, it was a bull trap because the following day was an 8% red candle, followed by a 20% overall pullback. Now, the technical target here was the macro fib pull. I'm going to try to pull up a chart that's a little bit less noisy for everyone. Okay, so some of you might see what's going on here, but we have a FIB pulled from this swing high at the all-time prior all-time high of November 2021 down to the cycle low of November 2022. And then right here, this 618 is what we retested after that exact time of the ETF being approved, sell the news event, and Bitcoin has been having 20% corrections on average throughout the last couple of years. While back in like 2017, we were having 30 to 40% corrections. But so far, this was one of several 20% corrections for Bitcoin. And it ended up being a bear trap because the way this pivoted off and closing daily is higher than this uh, peak back in January, things started to get kind of like in this short squeeze vibe. And then right after we surpassed those levels, we were sideways for a couple of weeks and then this pump extended. And every single day we were being hit with news and the narrative around inflows into these ETFs. But what's different about this whole move is what led to us hitting this all-time high right here, followed by this liquidation move. And then everything was chopped since. And now we could see that Bitcoin is corrected back to the levels of this March 4th date when we got into all-time highs. So what has been going on since is very narrative-driven. We've had so much greed enter this market. We have shitcoin mania. We have the meme coins are back. Everything kind of just woke up in this rally over here. And it seems to be when you have all of that synchronized, it's what the market maker uses. They leverage on your sentiment and the fact that you probably don't know how to buy the market and you only know how to get in, get in at tops. They know how to how to manipulate this market in that way. So whatever's gone on in this time frame, it seems very, very, well, first of all, it's awkward the way that it all happened. And it the whole market woke up out of nowhere. All these influencers who never cover crypto have started to talk about crypto. And I think that plays a lot more weight in this story, this cycle than it did in the last and definitely the last two. And now everyone is like a crypto technical analysis genius. You know, even people that they never talk about crypto, they're only like covering uh, the real estate or that, you know, they're covering credit cards or they're covering travel blogging. And then now they're talking about, you know, Shiba Inu again. So the fact that that all happened in this rally right here is very, very, very weird because that's not how the initial breakout happened back in 2021. It happened much later, at least three months to four months later, whilst this one was in synchronicity. So this is very, very weird how this all went down, this particular move. Well, I would also I would also say that the last I don't think that this is necessarily weird. This specific Bitcoin move, I thought 2021's bull run was weird. No, I don't mean the Bitcoin move was weird. I mean the fact that it's all synchronized with everything all at once, including the Google Analytics and the fact that it's been pushed through X.com so heavily. That's Mm -hmm. what I mean. It's in synchronicity. Whilst back in the prior cycle, it took some time for the alts to get that spotlight on it. Hmm, I see. Okay. Um, I don't I don't think there aren't too many alts in the spotlight. Like I, I would say, I would argue that a good amount of the altcoins in the spotlight are complete shit coins with some AI in there and Solana mm-hmm. ecosystem projects. And uh, like, this doesn't feel like an, 
altcoin run to me. It's me, not, me either. It's it's, <clears throat> it's that's not. why I'm like that's why I'm like I feel like there should be a pullback, a more aggressive one coming. But at the same time, that could be the fake out, and we keep going higher after we consolidate. In this that's point. how every pullback in a right? bull run feels. Is it, though. Is it that crazy? Every every like... pullback in a bull run feels like we're gonna go lower, but. Bro, yeah, can yeah, I just yeah. pause real quick? Can I yeah. just pause real quick? Absolutely. All throughout here, all throughout here, it was the same, the same song they were singing. We're mm -hmm. gonna go lower. When we went over here, I was hearing 10k in my own Discord. I was hearing people who were like showing up out of the woodwork, being like 10k Bitcoin, 8k Bitcoin, when it was down here, 15k. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna feel like that every time because people are fucking greedy. And yeah. you don't hear me talk like this often, but I want people to know, like, people need to be put on blast right now. Why is everyone so greedy? Why throughout here, when we were talking about investing in Bitcoin actively, 18, 20, 26K Bitcoin, why, did, why does everyone forget this time? It was much longer than this moment. So this is the thing that I think people just need to wisen up to. Stop waiting. Dollar cost average. If we do get any pullbacks, Take advantage of them. And if you don't have the money to lose and you need to be greedy waiting for these aggressive pullbacks, then you probably shouldn't be investing in crypto. You should probably look at another asset class. Like this game is not for that type of person. So I'm just saying like, it's going to be elusive every single time. Every pump is going to be elusive. Every pullback is going to be elusive. That is what the market maker does. They're checking the order books. They're keeping up with sentiment and they're the ones that rule the algorithm. So they have their finger on the scale and they could push it with the slightest bit of pressure and they could send this market very high because they have access to trillions of dollars of fake capital. Fucking stable coins aren't real. None of this is real. This is fairy dust. Every coin, XRP, Bitcoin, you name it, it's digital belief. It's no different than fiat. So people need to wisen up. If you're trying to walk away from this profitable, you have to stop looking for the extremes and take advantage of anything that's profitable. And maybe selling it all right now is a little bit too early. Nobody should be <laughs> considering that unless, again, you absolutely need the money. But <clears throat> whatever pullback we're getting right now, like it's going to be elusive. People are going to be calling for lower. People are going to be extreme and emotional about it, just like they were extreme and emotional on the way up. Absolutely, brother. And now I kind of want to see one thing. Um, I wanted to know, why do you think XRP has still say, stayed so suppressed while everything else has been so explosive? I mean, personally, I've always said XRP does like to move last. But this coin in particular, it's like as as much as people want to shit on it, this thing looks so good to me. Like when, especially when I look at the Bitcoin XRP chart, um, that looks fantastic. I love, I I love looking at that chart as it, every time it bottoms out, it just brings chills. You know, it really does. Um, the USD chart, it, it is what it is. It's at 59 fucking cents. But um, that's that's bullish, guys. Like, you've seen the three-hour video, most likely. You understand it's it's one of the most fundamentally sound cryptos. They're, they're making sure that this thing gets used one day. They're in bed. I like to call it, it's one of those Illuminati coins. You know, it's just, it just has the right connections. So if this is in fact the case, why are you looking at a Bitcoin at all time highs, at an ETH close to all time highs, at Solana near all time highs? Dude, exactly. When this thing, when it's this so thing, boring. It's and I so get boring. it. And guys, look, I get it. We're beating the a dead horse, XRP, XRP, XRP. You already know XRP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a move. That is why you get in now especially in the context of the current situation we have in the bull market. It's a blessing for you, the fact that this thing hasn't moved. You don't have to, if you're just getting in, you don't have to suffer like most of the XRP community has. You could probably make off like a bandit quickly. That's not financial advice. Fuck off. <laughs> that's how, <laughs> that's how I feel, bro. That's where I'm at. <laughs>
Yeah, no, you're saying the same kind of theme that I've been telling people, like even during all this Solana mania, I mean, if you match up the move between when Solana started to go parabolic and you look at the theta chart, they've done the same percentage moves. Why are you buying Solana when it's within 20% of all time highs, when you could be looking at charts that are 300 or 400% to retesting all time highs? Wake the fuck up. Stop this. People are waking up every day and going to coin market cap and looking at the top gainers, and then they're thinking that's impressive. That's not how you invest. Read the basics and learn the basics of investing from greats, not from just tuning into whatever's doing well. Like it's a facade. It's like looking at a woman with a with a Brazilian, you know, butt lift and then fake tits and being like, she's beautiful. It's like, no, that's a filter on her Instagram picture. And when you see her in real life, it's not going to add up damn you're you're making okay. wrong and you're making the wrong investments bro like well, everyone you have needs to make fun of the only fans models bro they're just trying to make an honest living come on that's now. true i shout out to the only, <laughs> shout out to the only fans models like they're 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 doing better than most crypto people they are bro. doing better they're doing better than a lot of crypto degens bro i could tell you that because there's the something you can learn from them they're, then. Like, they're, 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 some... they're the ones subbing they're the ones subbing <laughs> but that's what like, it is please. like people People Please. need to people need to stop looking at everything that's doing well and get excited about shit that's boring. You should be investing in stuff that's down. You should not be chasing green dildos to heaven. Like you're gonna lose this game because you're gonna panic sell if there's a correction. I know you're gonna do it. Like right. everyone did it in the last cycle. I watched it. I did portfolio reviews, <clears throat> which I don't offer now, and I'm glad I don't offer that service anymore. But I offered that 2020, 2021. And it was unbelievable looking at what some people were doing. And I've I've learned through watching and paying attention. Like, that's how you become great at something you observe. Mm, that was powerful. Can I observe something, actually, that you posted? Can we observe one of your most recent tweets? Can you bring oh, yeah, that sure. on the Twitter? Uh, can, that... can you bring it up? Because I, yeah, uh, I I'm like tech retarded. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I, I didn't mean to say the. I didn't mean to what? say the R word. Dude, I'm like I'm always five seconds away from getting banned, and and you like you're accelerating the process. <laughs> yeah, they shouldn't I'm, put us. They should not put us together. I'm five minutes away. Five minutes away. This might be the one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope. Uh, so, double click that maybe to make it bigger. So you posted this the other day. Yeah. About some solar eclipse thing. This mm -hmm. is where I bring waters on and I fall back into the background and cry over my lack of understanding. And my open mind will take the stage while water speaks into the abyss. And hopefully you all understand what he's saying. <laughs> Can we start with this comment at the top, at the bottom right, though? Like, Which look at the energy there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I want you to read it. Read this. Look at this comment. I've lost a lot of money listening <laughs> to claims XRP was going to a dollar. Then at the beginning, you said you sold all your coins because it was going to be very rough until May. You heard that, bro? I told I said I sold all my coins. <laughs> no, I believe it. I believe it, dude. Listen. Mm -hmm. What else, what I've when? no 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 water stop. What I've learned is that half of the population is half of the population is dumber than average. Sometimes you just need to let it go. Just let it I've, go. That's why I told you to read it because it's not embarrassing. It's a lesson. Like this is the energy that people need to see. Like unbelievable comment. I love it. All right, let's get back to reality. So April 8th solar eclipse, it's something I've been talking with you about for a while now. I know I'm looking at it from a more intricate perspective, but so a couple of days ago, this US debt clock, they put on their secret window, which you could go to if, I don't know if it's still up there, but then they posted this picture that's in the center of this decode that I made. And they also posted it to their official X account. And the time that they posted it on was 3.33 Eastern time. I thought that was pretty interesting that they timed it that way. But needless to say, um, besides that, there was some 33s in my decode at the bottom. But I'll do a quick just rundown. So what I did at the top left was I have two calendars. It's the April 
1940 calendar and April 2024 calendar and using the Hebrew uh, calendar. Of course, the calendar that we're using is the Gregorian calendar. And it's very, very rare for these to synchronize where we have the same Gregorian date, aka April 9th, to land on the exact same Hebrew calendar date, which in this in this situation will be Nisan 1. Now, Nisan is the biblical first month in the Hebrew calendar. I would also agree. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so with this matchup, if you were to go and look at the year 2023, 2022, 2021, and keep going, you're going to see exactly what I mean. It rarely synchronizes. And it's like every other year, Nissan isn't even in the month of April. All right. So anyways, we got the synchronicity. Now, what's insane is it's also landing on the same day of the week. Now, what gets even more insane is the fact that these are both during the year of the dragon. Also, so, these so were both during a solar eclipse. Waters, I have to I have to pause because now I'm lost. Okay. Sure. So calendars are syncing up from the past and, and also now. Cool. Both on a Tuesday. Fine. Um, so you're saying these eclipses both happen at the exact same time, like around 84 years ago? Yeah, within tw same. within 24 hours of each other. We had within the one on in 1940 was on the 7th into the 8th. And okay. the one that we have in 2024 is on the 8th into the 9th. <clears throat> okay. So we have our eclipses synchronizing as well, both during the exact Chinese zodiac year, both on the same day synced in the Hebrew and Gregorian calendars, and on the same day of the week. They are all matching. It's like a fucking repeat. Now, what's crazy is this was during World War II. And what happened mm -hmm. the prior yeah. year in 1939 was World War II officially started in the fall time. Well, what just happened in October of last year? We had Israel declare war. And now that's becoming a big part of the conversation. And it's adding to the to you know the, the bonfire of distraction of this Russia-Ukraine thing. And Russia mm -hmm. is a big part of this conversation. And that's where it gets over to the right side of my decode, where you can see the great American eclipse forms an X over the United States of America. They even show you in this U.S. debt clock picture. That's why it's so cryptic and weird, the fact that they posted this. And then at the bottom, they have a, a Psalm verse. I think it's Psalm 113. Anyways, you could go look up that uh, Bible verse if you guys want to dive even deeper. But X is the 24th letter in the alphabet. The Hebrew year that we're in adds up in numerology to 24 before reduction. And then we have the days between when this post was made, this turn on to the new kingdom this and was was this you said this was on the u.s debt clock exactly the u.s debt clock posted this Wait, picture i don't believe you I th this is bullshit go to their go to their x.com yeah. account and you'll no, see go to x.com and go to march 17th please you could do it while we're on film right now i don't want to because i have information in the background that will expose me it's okay so anyways this is very fascinating that they posted this picture and you can see there's constellations above America and I'll take yeah. word for it. Okay. Yeah. So the time span between when they posted this and April 9th, the date that I was decoding is 24 days who in, in Gamatria and Chaldean equals 24. And there was the day of the election that the re-election of Putin was on the same day they posted this fucking picture. And again, just synchronizing between the dates. Also, Vladimir Putin was born during the year of the dragon, which we're in now, and he just won this re-election. Mm -hmm. So, and I'll scroll to the bottom and you'll see right below the picture on April 9th of 1940, the National Socialists invaded Denmark and Norway. And what's really fascinating is Sweden just joined NATO quite recently. And perhaps that could be the next trigger event is another invasion, effectively. And it would probably be blaming the Putin guy because that's the modern day Hitler guy. And that's the narrative. That's not my belief, but that's the way the mainstream media is spinning it. Um, so then getting to the bottom, April 9th, 2024 is 33 years and 303 days since Russia's Independence Day. Like how incredible is that? Hmm. And then this eclipse is 33 days before probably the most important day 
that everyone wants to pay attention to of May 10th, because on this day, when the National Socialists invaded all of these European countries, the stock market crashed. It absolutely tanked. And the highest the stock market was during this 1940 year was uh, during the year, by the way, because it was higher in 1939 and higher in 1938. But during the year of 1940, the highest the stock market went was April 8th which is the day of our upcoming solar eclipse. Now, if anyone's been following along my work, or if they're, especially if they're a Patreon supporter, I've been covering this April 8th date, and I've been covering the patterns of the year of the dragon with the S&P 500, and I've shown without a shadow of a doubt, even in recent YouTube videos, by the way, if anyone wants to check out the last one I put out, late March into early April is where the stock market tends to top out during the year of the dragon. And well, it's perfectly synchronized <clears throat> because back in 1940, it was the same thing. Well, and that was a very, very key year because it was when the war narrative really went from being a narrative to being some serious shit. Like it went yeah, from being a, yeah. a narrative to being something important where if you weren't prepared for it, your life changed dramatically and you had no time. You had no time to make decisions after that moment. You should have been preparing. No. I'm going to cut you off very quickly because the casual observer at home is probably like, well, what the fuck is this? Is, what are you guys even talking about? Yeah. The reason I bring Waters onto this channel is to shed light onto some areas of existence that I don't cover because I don't pay attention to it because I'm a lot better and more interested in other things. But I feel I feel like there's value in showing water's work because it's thorough and well i don't necessarily believe every single thing that comes out of his mouth i think that a good amount of of what's being displayed here has some value like putin having his his re-election is real it's also his his birth year which apparently means that you know he's supposed to have a pretty good year right and correct isn't china isn't china symbolized by the dragon too and john so aren't they supposed to have a pretty good year right all while this eclipse is going through the united states making an x which is kind of you know kind of pretty fucking ominous i'm not gonna lie like in in the way in which a lot of people were saying this thing could happen it's not good um we are the enemy to Russia and China on the world stage. And we are going through an election year of our own with a dementia patient and some dude getting indicted on 9,000 fucking counts. So it's a, so I could already see the division. Yeah. And you, and you, and we're about to go on a forefront war. Okay. All while our stock market is on the verge of potential implosion. Cool. Yeah. So, there is fundamental analysis that I can give that makes me say, okay, this isn't crazy, right? And what you're saying is not crazy. What you're saying is actual things that you're putting together that have a system to where if you put it together in a certain type of way, it could give you a different perspective on the same thing. I already talk about. Yeah. Right. I already talk about all these things. Now we're talking about X's and Hebrew years. Why not? Right. Why the fuck not? Yeah. It's well, I mean, people people didn't really trust when I was first making my <laughs> channel and I talked about the Shemitah and the seven year cycle. And then I had to show people, well, it's not my opinion that every seven years we have the top of a bull run followed by a, a correction. I mean, that's not opinion. We could show you with 100 years of chart data. So what do you want me to say? You know, so it's like, I'm not here to convince people. I want people to know that. And I'm also, I'm glad that people don't believe every word I say, including you. I, that would be a cult. I don't give a fuck who believes in me. I tell people, basically, just trust, trust like this, this game for whatever it is. So you can learn from it, but only believe in yourself. This, you have to, you have to, uh, outside uh, afterwards, 
you have to show me more about this Hebrew calendar shit, bro. Because I'm just, I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> sure. Well, I know, I know it's ritualized the hundred percent because if you look at any of the key dates in the Israel story saga, going back to the Rothschilds, God, you're gonna bro, see that you're gonna see the key die. dates. I don't want to die. Stop talking about the lizard people, bro. Stop. <laughs> Please. Yeah, you're gonna be fine, brother. You're protected. I don't know. I'm like you're protected I'm, by Brad Garlinghouse's uh I'm, private I'm security. On the brink. I'm almost dude. I'm like so close, like almost there. I'm almost <laughs> there. Like, like one more strike, waters. Just please remember that. Please. All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Oh, fuck it we all die no i i mean i totally i get it a lot of people would come across this data and they'd be like well that's that's a lot to take in and i completely i completely understand don't ever feel like it's overwhelming like that's what my channel is all about i'm trying to give people this this gnosis so that you know you could utilize it for yourself and um we're not all about crypto with what i'm doing like crypto is a is a little bit of the bigger picture because if you give all of your energy to crypto, you're going to feel like you have no soul. Like you're going to be tortured, even in a bull yeah, run. Yeah. Actually, you'll probably have a worse time in a bull run than in a bear market. Mm. So hey, there's more to There's that. more to this. There's more to this life, man. And like, I need people to realize that because this is the purpose of this information. And I, I know that there could be more context added to this. Like I've had a couple of people actually with honest comments being like, well, can you tell us what this all means? And I'm like, I'm telling you one person one country and one date and one theme it's war putin russia april 8th i mean how do i want to spell this out people are not it's seeing that this is the it's most pretty... simple thing i've ever sh i mean again, i'm not trying to be a dick i i'm just yeah. being i've seen decodes that are completely discombobulated and i myself have even have even shared stuff that i know i could have been a little bit more detailed on but i made this simple there's one person's name in it one day that's all so it's not it, that complicated so is this potentially insinuating an escalation of war with Putin? is that what you're precisely saying, precisely it would make sense that if there's going to be a trigger date it would most likely be between the day of April 7th through April 15th, that gives you one week. And if I was to really, really nail it in, it would be on the true first month of the Hebrew calendar, which I know they ritualize. I don't have the time right now to break it down every single you know iteration, but people could just check out my channel and they could find out for themselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro, you're interesting. That's interesting. I respect that. Now, Something else. Really, I, really quickly, uh, before you get going, I want to ask you: Why do you think the U.S. debt clock posted such a picture? Please oh, riddle yeah. me this. That's what I want to know. So, for all the people out there that like they're not interested in the esoteric and they're not really, they don't really care about the depth of what we're getting into, just ask yourself why on this public website that every that's quite popular, by the way, that they're putting these pictures in the secret window and then also doubling down and posting it on their official socials. They're well, not trying to hide it. It's not a secret. They're straight up showing you what this is. What do you think about that? Well, I'm operating under the assumption that you're telling me the truth because you haven't lied to me. So I have to fact check that specifically because it even sounds so Bro, can you so give me a screen share? I'll screen share with you. Please. Oh, we're doing this. We're we're fact checking the the claim in real time. Okay. We're here. Oh. USDeckClock.org. Is wait, this their wait, official? Wait, wait, wait. One second. One second. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Okay. US Deck Clock. Because because that might not even be the real thing. I don't even know if it is the real thing. I don't and and I don't care if it has a stupid blue check. Everything is fake. Yeah, that's fine. Fake. Everything is fake. So I'm here on usdeckclock.org. I'm scrolling to the right. Can you see? Yeah, I see. I'm pressing open secret, open sesame, and now I am sent to this picture. Okay, that's that's the official usdeckclock.org. I don't believe it. Go back. Go back real quick. Go back. <laughs> I have to see this again because <laughs> I missed I missed the. Interview. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I don't even care if it's fake. 
this looks this is it <laughs> but like oh, this I is the us dot org oh my god and you press open secret window and the not so secret is this picture turn on to the new kingdom and now okay so people are going to conspire right they're going to be like oh well this means uh the new quantum financial systems coming in and nasara jasara because it says liberty and justice at the top a lot of people are going to assume that this means like a clearing of debts and uh i'm sorry people oh no i'm not allowed to say it can i be secret and coded with what i'm about to say i don't want to get you like Go, dude, go for it, man. We're all, all right, bro. Anyway. Debt, We're all debt, yeah. debt is death. It's debt, death. It's kill. You are the product. A human is the product. That's what the apex predator who runs the world thinks of you. Your blood is a product. Your your pinky finger has a price to insurance companies. All right. Each part of you has a has a has a price tag on it. All right. I'm sorry to burst people's bubbles here, but like you are the debt. So when people think of debt forgiveness, you're not like you don't understand what you're getting yourself into here. There's a reason they do what they do with war, and it's not to just take people out and to conquer the lands. It's a it's a ritual, a ritual of dark magic, Kabbalah, whatever, you know, you want to however deep you want to go. But it's a ritual and energy exchange. So what was first becomes last and what was last becomes first. And that's what we're in the process of right now. We're, we're in the process of like the power as we know it is in shift. And the respect that we have for certain things is also shifting. That's why nobody cares about the British royalty anymore. That's why they're, they're, they're putting scandal on them more hardcore than ever. And then the the queen of 70 years has passed on and it, it could all be fake for all we know. She could be in the Bahamas somewhere sipping daiquiris. Dude, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Hey, listen, Queen Elizabeth is a gangster, bro. She, she'd fake her own death. She would. She so would. my whole, my whole thing here is that like, we get the news, we get this, we get that, but we, all they're doing with us and the process is using us for our energy like we are the energy and your life is the debt. You are literally the product. So whatever happens on this, oh, and by the way, brother, I'll send this to you later, but somebody sent this to me showing me a compilation video of police, um, police uh, stations, I guess you call them like uh, precincts, I think would yeah. be the proper word, bro. They've been preparing for the solar eclipse for two years all well, of these, all of these, uh, these uh, cities and states that this will, that will be experiencing totality, they've all been prepping. There's military that's prepping on the ground in the United States of America for this upcoming solar eclipse. This is not my opinion. You can find official news showing this. Well, They're prepared. I, I would, I would say that New York is ghetto right now, and they called on the national guard to like calm things the fuck down <laughs> so i get i i i know what you're talking about and that's true but new york is a is really bad you know so like if if you're referring to the new york people or, no or, i'm not or the, or national guard and the mta that should have been happened like dude like five years ago please for the and can can we get a janitor to help clean the subway Hey, can we do that, bro? Can we clean the subway, please? No, no, I no. refuse. No, we should yeah. be like Japan, and we should clean up after ourselves, bro. Oh, I know. I like, know. let's get rid of like, let's get rid of taking our having our tax money stolen from us to give somebody a job that they might do. Like, mm -hmm. why don't we just take care of our own fucking place? Like, mm -hmm. I think it's sickening, actually. Like, we want this, some system to come help us out, and that's that's like crybaby culture. I'm not talking about you, by the way. I think I just proposed a radical idea. That's a no, radical no, no, no. idea for us to clean up after ourselves. No, but like, no, no. that's my solution. I'm like, why waters, don't we just... Jail. Waters. Jail. Jail for you. Jail. <laughs> Go to... That's it, guys. Jail. I could hear the sirens already. Sirens, yes. <clears throat> jail. Anyways, back to reality or the, the closest approximation we could get to it on this channel today. <laughs>
Um, I would say that what's been very fascinating for me is I've been following different things than you have, mm -hmm. but I awesome. feel like we're about to have a convergence of both narratives, chart analysis, woo woo, and everything, because this is what this is about. I personally have been looking very deep into the the recent cyber attacks going on behind the scenes. My most recent video mm -hmm. as, uh, was talking about how some major infrastructure was beginning to get compromised. This has mm -hmm. clearly been what Klaus Schwab and the WEF has been talking about um, in regards to the cyber pandemic. Um, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. But they said that's the biggest threat in 2019 when they ran event 201 and yeah. that was a simulation that was COVID. Does does that register with any that that was? Yes. Yeah. See, a magician needs to show you their trick and then still pull the trick off on you. It would be like like these people need to tell you yeah. what they're doing. That way it's, it's a people. script. That way it's a script. Tell it's you. scripture. But it's but it's what they do. They're not allowed to not tell you. So because they tell you and because you all accept it mm -hmm. by not resisting the fuckery, that is where they got you. Yeah. So now that you all know that something is likely soon, what's going to happen? Are you going to be prepared? Like... What what do we do? How can we prepare for potential worst case scenarios, potential best case future outcomes after we get out of it? Because, dude, I'm just I'm I'm in a place where I'm so ready for anything. Yeah, um, I have my cryptos offline. Um, Faraday boxes on lock. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. I have some extra water at home. I have. You have oh, one wow. of those you have one of those bookcases where you like you pull out Shakespeare and then like the shelf opens up and then there's like no, no, a no. secret tunnel that No 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 that's that's so 1995 bro come on <laughs> Fuck You turn you turn the dial on your Rolex and then it just pops open somewhere a little fucking secret compartment No dude I have a I have a sink where I turn if I turn it it makes me avocado toast that's what it is Oh shit <laughs> Is your is your uh, hardware wallet uh, blinged out? Do you, did you get it encrusted with diamonds? I think that's a dumb thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think, bro, you, <laughs> I've never fucking laughed like at an actual fucking thing somebody said in a pot. That was gold. <laughs> I think if you're already gonna, you know, put your bro, life bro, mind. bro, bro, sorry, <laughs> sorry, but like I, I watched this one guy review watches and he like looked at Floyd Mayweather's collection and like all of it was blinged out. And every time he said a comment about the watches, he was like, That's a dumb thing to do. <laughs> it. it was exactly it, the vibe of what you just said, and it's but, but it is, it's like if you're already gonna risk your entire life savings on a fucking USB. Like the the last thing you should do is put some diamonds all over it, bro. To, you know someone's done it to you completely, know... completely let everyone know the target that they need to go yeah. after. Yeah, let's let's do that. But that's how people are. I've seen. I've actually one time in my life saw somebody walking around with their hardware wallet on a keychain. On and a I was key like chain on their neck. I was like, like what dude. are you doing? That's like the weirdest. Is that a flex? Is that like a nerd flex? No, it's it's just being a nerd. It's mm. just being a nerd. Being a nerd's kind of dope, but like wearing it a is it, no being a nerd is fine, but these people are nerds. Yeah, that's a different type. That's a different type no, of uh, no street intelligence at all. Yeah, that's that's they're rock bottom. I think I think the better the better phrase is victim. They're <laughs> A walking advertisement for victims. Dot us. Yeah. Anyways, to not pick on the majority of the crypto community, <laughs> we're going to con Dude, I'm off the chain now. Like, I don't. I care. could tell you've reached your you've reached your your pinnacle of like now you're now you're having fun video, again. I don't care. It's it is what it is. Come for me. Whatever whatever happens, happens. That's God a good energy, bro.
it's good. I'm having I'm having a fucking blast. I will add though, um, to bring it back to bring it back home, April eighth. I have been generally speaking, I have been very um, frightened over the state of the stock market. Um, the mm. state of people, their crippling credit card debt, uh, inflation is really taking its toll. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, the crypto market is is an anomaly to itself. The fact that we're going so high right now is it's like great to finally see, but it's also a looming catastrophe. Yeah, the timing of it's weird. It's very strange. I'm going to say right now to everyone at home, and and I actually said this the last time you came on, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen next. And uh, logically speaking, if I were a rational person, which I am, I would say that the market should probably cool off, maybe trade sideways, go down with the stock market a little bit mm-hmm. if, if that pulls back. But dude, this crypto doesn't care about rationality like right <laughs> so so this is important everyone sitting here at home watching right now cannot make any investment decisions on shit we say based on short-term price speculation and analysis as we're figuring out the hardest and most volatile market in the world and if you're basing on your investment thesis on anything we're saying right now the entirety of it you are dumb you're dumb we, we've been in this market i've been in this market since 2016 and if i'm wrong about saying i think we should have a pullback guess what my friends i'm still gonna make fucking money because i'm all in in crypto i'm mostly all in so if i say it could go down and it goes up i make money and yeah. if it goes down i wait and then eventually i'll make money do you see how that works do people get this? Do people not understand? Because there are people no. with a thousand dollars out there that don't get it, that are like, oh, I'm down today. Oh. Yeah, that's a bad place to be mentally, too, because it's it's like who who who's going to serve you? Like, what do you who do No, you because then if are? they were if that person was rich, like just imagine how they're going to treat people exactly it's like, like imagine how they're gonna treat people imagine what they're gonna do with the money like it's just kind of a yeah it's wisdom. a temperature it's a temperature wisdom. gauge wisdom mm-hmm. chases these people but they continue to run faster waters they yeah. continue to run far away from it's wisdom. like i it's like i said though this is the only asset class where if you make money and walk away profitably even if you're early which is the best time in the mm-hmm. game of musical chairs you're wrong because you weren't it wasn't enough you like you, it's um, it's really really wild but I, know, i've learned it every every cycle i've seen it happen this is my biggest frustration waters this is my biggest frustration if you were over here making eight percent a year back in <laughs> 1990 yeah. you were a god yeah you were the second coming of christ yeah that's who you were now we could be in on XRP right now, dude, and see it go from 30 cents to 60 cents where it is now in a year. That's double. That's double, dude. It's, Ooh, not, a, it's not enough, bro. With, it's not enough. This, and it's like, <clears throat> bro, I need more. Like, and it's like, look, I get it. It's frustrating. Other shit is going. Scams are going. Everything's a Ponzi. Fine. Yes, everything's a scam. Just let this scam just go up in price when it finally does, because when it does, it'll go up fantastically. Everything's a scam. XRP is a scam. Bitcoin's a scam. ETH is a scam. The stock market's a scam. Your money's yeah. a scam. Your your life is a scam. Everything you ever knew was a scam. So just enjoy the scam that you own. Like just choose a scam that'll do well. You know, precisely. Just 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 do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just shut it's part up. of the it's part of the waking up process, <laughs> honestly. Like the biggest part of the process of enlightenment is waking up and just realizing that everything is a lie. Everything like, is a and scam. all all you have to do is be honorable in the process. Like you, listen to your listen to your intuition, listen to your heart. Like don't go against, you know, don't push chaos into people's lives, but embrace the chaos. Like it but, is all a scam, but, technically. But waters. It is. It's not. It's not even technically. It's all a fucking scam. 
It's like, but the, the conspiracy theories are fun though. Like I love the, the dude, when everyone was getting on this BSV psyop, I was like, I was kicking back. You didn't hear me say a word about it because no, I'm just but, like, let this play out. Like but this I whole don't... Bitcoin going to zero and then some other conspiracy tying to the proof of why that will be. And every time Bitcoin just continues to do what it does, it's, I'm like, I don't get it. And I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. I'm not any, in any of these groups. Like, I'm just looking at things for what it is. Like, I'm here to walk away with more money than I put in. That's all. And if and I can help some people spiritually and consciously along the way, then beautiful. That's, but like, that's the most beautiful thing, brother. That's the, yeah, most the, the wealth thing. is just a symptom of, of your honor. But if you're not honorable, bro, you're going to be poor in spirit and conscious consciousness, and you're going to do dumb fucking shit with your money. And you're no. going to treat people like shit, too. You're going to treat people like shit. And Most that's a, people. that's 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 not something you want to do, because this world does have a bank account that's secret. All right. Like, I know this is deep talk, but like <clears throat> if if you if I be honorable to you, whether we're talking or not the 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 global bank of of whatever the the etheric bank it knows it knows so i always have to treat you like a brother God even if you're talking shit about me even if God you're always watching bro even yeah. if you're making videos saying waters above is this that and the third i just have to remind myself like i know where he's at right now whatever's going on there must be if anything it makes me want to go reach out to you that's the kind of guy i've become mm. where like if somebody wants to start being being weird i actually try to reach out with them reach out to them be like tell me what's up but this world right now is weirdly competitive it's flex culture it's a lot of like everyone wants to be the big dog but then they don't want to make big dog decisions mm. they want to be told what to do when to do it and then they blame the guy who the fucking told them you know it's like the weirdest uh let, world let we me, have right now let me extrapolate very quickly on that waters because mm -hmm. that's very important please or our minds are being melted by the overstimulation of everything around us. Brother, we have, we have a generation of children that missed an entire two years of school while wearing face masks and being psyoped into being afraid of air while simultaneously not being able to learn speech patterns because other people are participating in this fuckery, right? So we see all this. Now we have a society. And at the same time, these children are on iPads and TikTok learning whatever the hell. The next generation is fucked. And I remember watching a K, uh, uh, X KGB. I think you you see probably seen, seen this video. Yeah, I, I remember me and you talked about it too. Yuri, Besmanov. fifteen to twenty years it takes to change yeah. the trajectory of a country because that's how long it takes mm -hmm. for you to get control of the minds of a generation. Well, mm -hmm. welcome to the end games of the empire, my friend. I'm having a fantastic time watching the spectacle to behold. Big X's on America. I'm ready for more Trump indictments. I'm patiently waiting <laughs> for them to trip Biden. They, then they got to bring on Big Mike. Once Big Mike is here, then it'll be really a Royal Rumble. I want to see it. This is what I want. End times America 2024. <laughs> this is it. This is the You're starting to sound like Alex for. Jones, bro. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. This is exactly what it is. This is exact. This is what I want. It's not. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Don't get me twisted. This is what I want. This is the movie script I want to see. Script writers, organizers of the universe, listen to me closely. This is what I need, and this is what the people want. This is what they want. They don't even know they want it. Tell me, you wouldn't want to see Big Mike Trump duke it out in the fucking ring? I want to see it. I want to see it. What's wrong with that? Come on. <laughs> what a great turn this took. Yeah, I think wow. it's important to start treating it all like it's just part of the Hollywood kind of uh it's it's another tentacle of the octopus of Hollywood politics. We need, we need to get back to crypto before I lose all my Yes. Money. Yes. <laughs> yes. Also, I think I'm you're still sharing this tweet on the screen. So now oh, everyone that's definitely a, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> What I will say um, in regards to this specifically, um, 
it's interesting that all these things are happening now and I'll bring everything together into something that the people will think will be valuable. In regards to XRP specifically, I remember vividly you saying numerous times that you're bullish on XRP Mm -hmm. than most other coins this year in 2024. And specifically, I believe, Mm. I remember you talking about April being a magical time potentially for XRP, maybe it being synchronistic, maybe this eclipse with the ending of the case. I know you don't know for everyone in the comments already ready to talk shit yeah yeah what well my, yeah my i actually um i'm not really looking for anything hippy dippy or woo woo i was just kind of speculating that if there is the grand trial on the specific dates that we were told which anyone could go re you know look up then i would uh, i would assume there's a speculation uh impulse which there always is in every project if if a, a new coin is about to be listed listed on an exchange there's a speculation impulse to the upside i mean so that was kind of the play there do you and, do you see anything on the xrp charts now specifically that would lead you to believe we could be in for some better price action in regards to xrp let me pull up the chart real quick but also to be to be 100% honest with people, I think that we need to be aware that XRP does isolated moves. Like it doesn't have this vibe of following the markets like we see with other projects. And then the projects that are tied to XRP are suppressed along with XRP. And that's pretty obvious if you look at the chart of XRP, XLM, and XDC. So they all have a very similar structure with highs in July, lower high, and then recently lower high. You see XLM, high lower high. This is a little bit more bullish actually. And XDC is the same. So how is that going that way? You know, And then we see Solana has pretty much followed technically what Ethereum has done. It's one-to-one. I know that the gains are much more in Solana, but when you're looking at chart structure, they're, they're pretty similar. So yeah, like I think when we're analyzing XRP, we look at it almost like a basket. Like it's a basket of projects that move in synchronicity with it. And it moves on its own. And we saw this clearly back in 2017. And that'll be the the kind of recap of some of the things I've been talking about lately, because if pre- people are brand new to my work, I know this could be very overwhelming, but the basics here are during this cycle from 2013 over to here, where it started this breakout in 2017, you can see it started by the end of March into early April, and then it extended throughout the end of April into May. And what's interesting, though, is right around here, when XRP was still a fraction of a penny, Bitcoin was already at all-time highs. Bitcoin was already trading up here. And the way that XRP retested all-time highs was in a straight-line breakout. It didn't have the structural breakout that we saw with Bitcoin. So let me quickly bring up like a Bitcoin chart to just kind of make sense of all this and show people some comparison. So again, we're just looking back at the 2017 cycle. And you're going to see day by day what was going on. I'll turn off everything, make it nice and simple for people. So we have right over here. This is Bitcoin's all-time high. This is Bitcoin retesting all-time highs around March 13th. Actually, it almost got to all-time highs in January of 2017. Look at January of 2017 for XRP. Look at where it was. It was still 800% away from retesting all-time highs. What was going on here was very interesting, how the moment that Bitcoin actually did get into price discovery, so in this moment right, right here, which could be the very moment we're in today because the dates have been matching up pretty similarly. We see that Bitcoin topped out by like mid May, sorry, mid-March, and then it corrected into like March 25th. And then we had a recovery and continuation. So far, it's March 20th, and we're in this phase of correction, similar. And we're retesting around the prior all-time highs. Well, if you look at that time frame of March 20th, look at how far down XRP was. Still 800% away. Well, if you look at where we are today, if I was to zoom out, put on like a three-day chart, I'm going to turn off everything just to kind of compare. Look at how down we are comparatively to all-time highs while Bitcoin's doing what it's doing at the same exact time. Now, we know that XRP can make big moves 
even with these negative uh, narratives, these bearish narratives, because we saw it back here from 2021, the start of the year up to this peak, it was exactly about a 10x. And that was at the beginning of the Ripple SEC lawsuit with no clarity. Now, since this moment over here, we know XRP is not a security. And over here around this fractal, we had uh, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse no longer being part of this equation in a negative sense. So we have we have some key wins in this whole bullshit that everyone's been dealing with in the XRP community, but the price is still pretty down. But I find it interesting that we're trading at a price that was historically a resistance throughout our bear markets, but it's become a support level during our more bullish phases. And that to me looks like we're coiling up for a breakout. The only thing is, is that where's the money coming from? That's what I think is the most important part. Whilst Bitcoin is getting its time under the narrative spotlight, it's eventually going to shift over. And although Ripple being under scrutiny during this correction over here, what did it do? It put eyes on XRP and all publicity is ultimately good publicity. So even if you're becoming the, the villain, you still have eyes on you and attention is everything, especially in a nascent asset class. So my my assumption here is we could actually be replaying out something like this, where we have eyes go on XRP because of what happens with Ripple in this SEC case, which the dates have been pushed forward a little. Uh, I'm sure you've, you're have you updated on this or maybe you're I'm not. I'm not paying okay. attention to anything in regard to that. As Fair. his case anymore, I don't care. It'll happen when it happens. I woke up July 13th at three o'clock in the afternoon and my phone was buzzing with people that hadn't talked to me in two years. Mm. Bad, Same, bad look. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, oh, what's going on? Why is everyone why does everyone care about me today? Oh, XRP is not a security in court. Oh, yeah, fuck off. Okay, yeah. I went back to sleep, bro. I didn't. I was like, okay. And and when XRP hits new all time highs, and probably within one to seven days, because that's how XRP moves, I will do the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's right. XRP moves in like under one week. It could do a full completion of a of a top. So you <clears throat> even actually over here, one of the things that I remember, oh, bro, me and you got on a phone call, and I was telling you like right around this day cuz i think you you called in and i was i was kind of like worried and the reason i was worried was because the initial day of the breakout was this big wick to the upside and i was like xrp does that like it's high is always in the front it's high is always in the front right there that was a big sign that like yeah this is probably going to keep this is going to correct and like, I don't understand how they're calculating it so well. It has to be bots. It has to be just whales with a cell wall. And then they just inject some liquidity. They get some FOMO going. They push the narrative. But it's that first day initially of these pumps is when it follows with some, some you know, harsh, harsh days and, and lessons learned of like, if you wanted to get situated a little bit more comfortably in your portfolio, you should have had limit orders set and... You should have a plan. But like, that's kind of the thing is I remember back at this time, me and you were talking about it before it even happened. And people were like clowning me because I was saying that I was de-risking. And I'm like, well, yeah, again, it shows that even in the XRP community, which is a community of people that are quote unquote, patiently waiting for some glory days, they still throw you into the fire when you're talking about taking profits on this thing. And I'm like, this is why this community is never going to learn. So I don't blame you for your decision to like, no, I didn't leave it. Wait, I didn't, I, I, I haven't left. Let me make that clear. I've put in five years of work and, and put out a three hour long banger for everyone to finally realize that, that you need to calm down and realize what you own. Because XRP has always been a long-term investment. I've just always believed long-term was sooner than what it has been. And the SEC case threw a wrench in things that a shadow of a doubt. I think if there that thing didn't happen, um, we would have seen new all-time highs in 2021. Um, but it didn't. So now we're here. Now the thing, the environment has changed. The case is over effectively for what we, the retail investor, need in regards to XRP. Builders are beginning to build more, right? Um, the chart looks fine. 
there's uh, we're in bullish territory in regards to crypto the bullish context with the etfs and and bitcoin new whole time highs is powerful like all the conditions are met for this thing to blow and i've been making a killing on all coins and have been rotating some profits in xrp like people don't realize being diversified and 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 then rotating profits into the laggards is the greatest thing you could do in this market. Sure. Especially yeah. when XRP is the laggard and XRP is so fundamentally strong and safe as a crypt like like XRP is a safe crypto to me. I could put as much money as I want to in it and I don't think it's ever going away. Like even when we were peak lawsuit day of I'm like I bought that day. I'm like this sucks whatever mm -hmm. you know so so people need to just consider that like this this is a big boy asset this isn't for children like you you really do have to put your big boy pants on you know yep. like this, uh, the adults in the room will have their fun in the sun and the children will lose their money on the meme coins and that's fine that's the way the universe self-corrects and and that, it's inevitable though it's inevitable so just uh just know just know what you have yeah learn how to become an investor i think that's like the most important like most people that i hear that are complaining or they're just getting emotional about all this it's like they never took the time to learn but, how to be this, how to invest but this people people need to choose their time horizons when they start because if you're a trader, that's a different thing than investing. Some people are in between trying to mm -hmm. do both at the same time with their whole bag. Then you're fucked because yeah. that's not a strategy. You're trying to learn how to trade with your long-term bags. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're, you're handing over your, your wealth to the market maker. Yeah. You're putting your wealth, the majority of your money, into some shit you heard about last week, but then, but then you talk shit about XRP, but now you lost it, but now you want XRP back, but you don't have any money. Like, dude, what do you? What's going on? You have to choose. Do you want to be a trader and make money, or do you want to be invest an investor, and eventually see your money grow? Yeah, like those are or, two or do or different things. Do do both, but do both of those things in threes. So, like, I'll share just some quick like basics with everyone. Like, you have something you'll never sell. You have to keep a portion of everything just because. Like, I know that sounds weird, but it's like there's stuff that I held on from 2020, not XRP necessarily, but just like other alts, and I'm like so well situated in my net worth because I did not sell them. And the price discovery I'm going to have in the next cycle is going to be fucking wild. This is why I don't care what Bitcoin does. So like there's a portion of the bag that you never sell. That's the super long term. Like you look at it like retirement replacement. If you, if you want to have simple terms, then you have something that you do cyclically. Like, am I trading this under this longer time horizon of four years? Because I, my investment thesis tells me there's a four year cycle, whatever. I don't care what you believe in, but it has to be something kind of that midterm. And then for the short, short term, it's probably because you might have made mistakes. So if your portfolio is 80% fucking XRP and you're complaining every day that why isn't this thing going up, right? Well, you should have been diversified a little bit more in a more sophisticated manner. And that's where that like shorter term, that was why I de-risked XRP over here. Also, I sold some things intentionally at a loss before the end of the calendar year for tax loss harvesting. Then I rotated that stuff back into other alt plays such as Theta, VeChain, Vetho, T-Fuel, which have made so much profits into this new calendar year. It was like talking with my accountant about it. It was gorgeous, but people are only going to remember some nonsense. Okay, but that doesn't matter to me because I had an investment thesis and a trading plan and it helped me out in all regards, whether it was profits, tax purposes, business, everything. I don't just make a play for one simple reason, and that's the short term stuff. So there was things that needed to be done at the end of that calendar year. That was the ultra short term. All right. Then when it comes to trading, I would never recommend people do day trading. You're 
you really need to train for that. Like Kobe Bryant showing up at 4 a.m. to shoot free throws. Like if you're not ready to be that type of guy, you probably shouldn't be day trading because you're going to walk away with way less than you came in. You need with. millions to do that. Yeah, you need a you lot need, of capital and you need to play with low leverage and it's just it's a headache. You you're, you need you're millions to make that like good money on a, one play maybe once every couple months. Like really? Yeah, I mean, even what I've taught people with the moon cycles, people could deny it all they want, but I could show you play by play like the moon phases work every fucking time like there are times where it's a little bit more difficult to play it but if you're generally building positions like with some sort of dollar cost averaging or entries and tiers then you're gonna walk away from every moon cycle profitable i'm not saying to short uh the market but you could have been shorting the market using the moon cycles during the bear bear phase now that we're in a more bullish phase you could just long you could long every full moon and just keep going mm. anyways Getting back to, you know, the stuff that's more relatable to everyone. You need to break up everything into time horizons, but it's okay to do some short-term trading if it's a skill that you want to build and if it's something that could be, you know, but I think for the most part, people should not be short-term trading crypto, especially with leverage. That's, it's not for everyone. And even the best traders on earth say, don't do it because it's too much problems with liquidity on these exchanges. We just saw a couple days, like yesterday, Bitcoin dropped to 8K on uh, Bitfinex or something. The game is rigged against Yeah, you. dude, like they don't give a fuck. Like on the big boys are not playing on these exchanges. They're not, or they're the ones that are showing up to that exchange for a quick minute to then do that event so they could take all your money. So like, yeah, people need to, people need to zoom out, I guess. I know you've been harp, you know, you've really been hammering that in, but there's nothing wrong with some short-term trading if it's a skill that you want to develop and if it's something that's interesting to you. I, right. I still I still think there should be emphasis on the forever bag, though. There's nothing wrong with having a forever bag. Like, Absolutely. I got all my XRP around 20 cents. No flex. It's just people could look at my Crypto Mastermind course. They could look at all my old videos, and they could be hearing the play-by-play -play on that last bull run and how I played it. And I never sold everything. I never sold everything. I always kept a little bit. The same thing with the Bitcoin. I mean, I kept actually a lot of Bitcoin because Bitcoin I always knew had less ROI. And I knew that it's not this play that I want to be getting too fancy with. So whenever I do make moves on Bitcoin, I'm confident. You know, I'm super confident. But on altcoins, I know that's where the ROI is at. But I'm not going to be an idiot and be 90% altcoins at the end of a bull run. That's what most people do. When at the end of a bull run, you should be in Satoshi's or state. I mean, if you really want to just completely liquidate and take all the capital gains and do that, then sure, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking everything out. But you never know if you're right. Like, I never know if I'm ultimately right about some venture capital altcoin play. But it is unfortunate because you talk about taking profits in a bull cycle and people, they just, they don't know how they to react to it. It's, it's too their emotional. Mind. It's too they emotional. They lose their mind. Money is there generational wealth is in front of your face extreme 20 to 50 x profits could be in people's faces and they'll let it subside crash in the wind blow away like it was never there that happened to me in 2017 that happened to me 80 percent of my portfolio gone within a month wow. 80 because i was Dude, I was a savage in the old coin market. I was in substratum at ten cents, went to three dollars. Neo eight dollars two hundred. Other what what other stupid coin went up? V chain. I was in there back when it was Ven, bro. I was in V chain early, early done, mm -hmm. and then and then some exchange. Scam me out of an uh, out of the swap in a vet, but that's a whole story for a whole another day. But it's like I've seen it all, and all I'm gonna stress to everyone is don't fuck this next opportunity up. It doesn't matter what we say here today. We're just trying to help everyone see something and give you information for all of you to decide based on more research you all need to do not just this nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day 
or the day after that. We're not trying to tell you what's going to happen. We're trying our best to analyze the most difficult market in the world objectively with some woo woo and some really, really, really fundamental analysis and some really, really, really great TA. That's that's all we're doing. And even even then, we can still be wrong. And even in being wrong, we can still make money. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that fantastic that you can be wrong about a hypothesis and still make money? So are you even wrong, Waters? I'm not concerned with that. I'm not concerned with that. I've told people this so many times. Like, If you concern yourself with being right and wrong in this world, you're looking at life through duality consciousness, and you'll always be in that hot and cold, and you'll never be in the neutral path. Your life will either either be suffering or it will be momentary happiness. So I don't concern myself with the right or wrong. It's irrelevant. But let me, for for the average Joe at home, okay. the, for, for the person that has watched some of our streams, maybe the last one where they were like, Waters, you said there was going to be an old coin crash and it yeah. didn't happen and we were bullish. Okay. So what after, after that, uh, you guys could go and listen to the last collab me and waters did i said i might have to change my opinion because i was bullish on alts back when i think you remember when when we had our last one i was actually bullish and you said no i fear we may be in bad times and i was going to actually take some chips off the table and say you know he's he's been very accurate before it is what it is i'll have some kind of but so eventually I just decided not to just because I'm like, I've been through it all. I don't care if it crashes. And instead it went up. Right. That's like, like what I want people to get from that is that that's an adult making a decision for himself. Right. That's an adult decision. Like you came in with different information that what I previously believed and I question my previous held beliefs deeply and mm -hmm. i contemplated it before making a serious decision yeah so you know what i don't even though i respect what he said i can handle being wrong about this even uh, because i'm staying true to my initial conviction and it is what it is i don't care and then what happened happened Dude, I don't I didn't know what was going to happen in the market, but I made some money. I took some chips off the table and rotated profits. Yeah. I took some AGIX at a dollar 40 and then you should. got over into XRP. There's so much context around all of what you've just said though. Like that, there's that, and so, people it's flooded throw with context. The context out the door. Yeah. It don't yeah, give a fuck. Like care. I think what we need to rewind back to is when I was talking about there being an effect of solar eclipses and solar cycles with relation to Bitcoin's price behavior. And I told people about this before the bull run even started. I told people that we have a theme where after every new eclipse moving forward, we will close higher than the prior eclipse. And there's just so much context that gets thrown out of the window for some like really revolutionary analysis. And I get the point of the market go up and market go down talk, but it's like, yeah, I don't get why people are trying to get so fancy. Nobody was saying sell. Nobody was saying, I mean, I was very adamant that I'm not selling altcoins just yet. I never sold any XRP, but I had people coming into my world being like, why did you, you said you were selling XRP. When did I say, find a sound clip of me saying after July, please of me saying that I sold XRP and no one can no one can share it with me because it's never been said. Also, I have in my Discord, which is part of my Patreon for my Patreon supporters, Mastermind Community Membership, I have a section where I share all of the de-risking, all the profit-taking, all of the new positions that are being added to my portfolio. It's right there for them. So I just, I think the context is, you know what it is, bro? There's too much content right now. There's too that's, much. That's what it is. And I, I, I actually, I'll say this really quickly. Like, I know this is kind of a side note, but this could be influential for you. But Kendrick Lamar's last album was like, what, like six years after his prior one? 
And me as a content creator that's like putting out, and by the way, that was a work of art. That wasn't a fucking hip hop album. That wasn't just him talking about bitches and hoes and chains and Bugattis. Like yeah. that was a deep exploration through the man's experience of being fragile still as a celebrity and somebody who's like a father. And like all of the humanity of this man was exposed on this album. This wasn't a typical piece of music. So uh, just to get through it real quick. The fact that it took him that many years, and by the way, that's not that's nothing. Like some works of art take decades. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I need to be, I need to reflect on this because as a YouTuber, we're press pressured into making videos like every week. And I I make no, and, a video. And that's what it that's what it is, brother. That's what I decided. Because and I, I apologize for cutting you off because that's okay. There's there's this thing where it's like everyone in XRP just rushes to put on some information out first, even if it's wrong. Like, yeah. like, and back in 2020, I'd find myself falling into that trap too. And then, oh, there were people that would be like, hey, bull, like, this isn't right. Like, you got it. And then since then, you have to refine, you have to realize. And it's, that's the thing. There's too much incorrect information there's too much there's just too and, much and, information and people it's don't not even incorrect or correct it's just there's too much information and we don't know what to do with that our minds weren't meant to deal with this exactly technology. we haven't adapted and evolved and right it's it's like the ability to sift through info i mean bro bro there's still people like wearing masks now like come on <laughs> good good point <laughs> but yeah, just to just to like wrap up the thought on the whole Kendrick thing, it was like it, it really almost made me emotional to think about it. Like I felt pressure and I don't I don't I put out a video once every two weeks, actually, sometimes. So and I have no problem with that. And I'll do that through all the hype. I'll do that through where things were on the on the real fucking crazy accurate trajectory and i will still purposely not put stuff out because i just don't care i'm not an influencer i'm not like this is i'm not your court jester like mm. i'm a fucking human being and i have like a family and i have people i care about and i'm not gonna let this youtube shit become my life Amen. like it, it's just not i'm not gonna let this commute these people do it to me the fans or whatever and, and that's the thing, like, I know it took me some time to separate from all of that. And, and I'm very grateful and blessed for this whole experience. And it got me to a point where I was like, damn, you know, like, what would happen if I decided to just like not make any content for two months or three months? Like where I bet you if I treated 2022 and 2023, just making one video a month and not even podcasts, not no Twitter, none of that shit then people would treat it all differently and because dude, they would have way exactly, less information to feed on. But the exactly fact that they're getting these frequent, these frequent uploads, it's like people don't know how to use the information and then they start taking stuff out of context and then they take you for the right or wrong based on like the weirdest thing and then they disregard everything else. And it's like, this is the, you know what it also reminds me of? It's like when you're a boxer and you're training for a heavyweight title, right? This takes a year, like a minimum eight, nine months of preparation. I know back in the, back in the day, like it used to not be like that, but like Muhammad Ali would be like eight, nine, 10 months in training for this fight. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody sees that. Nobody sees that. They see the fight, the day of the fight. And, and I'm like, I wish more people would just learn about the process and stop being so like, People couldn't, they couldn't imagine, bro. People don't, this is, bro, that's exact, what you said, just not posting content for a month. I did that exactly. Like, I did exactly that, and then put out a three hour long XRP video. Boom. My best piece of work, you can't, you can't. It's, it's like people don't, people take information for granted and people take certain things for granted and even people that they follow for granted and it's like you can't do that and you can't become a slave to your audience you have to be yourself yeah right you have to be yourself you have to make content that you love and then your audience will find you your people not the people who follow you your people will find you and and that's that's what it's about you know and to the people at home, 
that are my people and Waters people. I appreciate you deeply. You've given me meaning and purpose in my life, and I hope to uh, just continue to provide value in whatever way I can in the new ways I look to. And it will be spectacular, and it will be a lot of fun. And it's uh, it's breaking the mold of the aggressively average <laughs> if you will you know we're we're looking to become extraordinary the new one percent if if you genuinely just listen and be patient and learn and put in effort i promise you 2024 is going to be filled with prosperity for you in the chaos and the chaos my friend that in all the pandemonium that is where the change and the opportunity is. That's true. Yeah, that's right. The, so so seize the day. Seize the day. Your favorite anonymous voice on the internet is telling you, well, to seize the day, you'll all be okay, my hooligans and delinquents. You will be. XRP looks great. Crypto is bullish for, for the year. Waters, do you have... Um, any arguments against that? Do you do you think we could be in store for a flash crash randomly? Um, mm. Just because, like this, I know the stock markets looks crazy. I expect something there. Do you think maybe stocks, money from stocks, starts coming into crypto? Is that where some of that money comes from? Yeah, I'll quickly do a rundown of everything just to give people kind of where I'm at with this story. So first and foremost, this chart that I had up before, it's the Bitcoin weekly chart and we got RSI. So relative strength index, this indicator, it got up into 88 on the weekly close and then followed by a correction immediately. This is an area we don't get to too often. So we can see we got there back in this cycle top. We got over here when we were already breaking out into price discovery into the finality of the bull run, which was only a couple months. And then here at the very beginning of the last bull run. And then this was not the most fun type of bull run to be in because of the way that this distributional top came in. And I know maybe few people remember this, but there was a 57% correction during this moment. And that effectively ended the alt season. So when you look at the amount of days from Bitcoin getting into this area in like February till the whole end of the bull run, it was really fast. It was like two months. And I've been telling people like, I know everyone wants up, up, up and only up, but you can't disregard that when you go up too quickly, too fast, it creates a very unhealthy market. The market structure isn't developed. And when you do correct, it's dramatic. You can see things completely lose almost all of their gains. And I'm not talking about Bitcoin. I'm talking about more speculative altcoin plays. So we are overheated in this market. That's been obvious. We now are correcting, and I do think there's a little bit more correction underway. I could show people the quick technicals on that, and it's as simple as this. Bitcoin rallied up from this horizontal level to this 70, almost 74,000 level very quickly, and we have thin air below 61K down to 51K. That's a 10K sweep. We can completely... Uh, we we can complete that move actually within this calendar month, and that would not be weird. I'm not trying to get super specific with the timing of all of this, but I think it would be very healthy right now for Bitcoin to retest this level over here. And if I pulled up the weekly chart and I have this 21 exponential moving average, which was a typical retest level in this prior bull, the bull run of 2017, you can see all throughout 2016 and 2017, we held weekly closes and bounced off of this 21 EMA. Well, over here, we have been sort of respecting it. We see this was the March Silicon Valley crash. This was over here, back test into June, actually right after a solar eclipse, by the way. And then we played around it here until the eclipse of October 14th, which, by the way, I told everyone here in prior uh, podcasts we've done together, that is a very key moment. And you can see everything after this October eclipse started to break out. So pretty amazing to be situated in anything before that moment. But now we're overextended and we see we have yet to backtest this 21 exponential. And today it sits at the exact level that I just pointed out. It sits at 48.9, so like about 49,000. And on this chart that I was showing you, uh, sorry, 
I was telling you about that 51K area. I'm not as organized because I wasn't prepared for this, but this level right here of a little bit of horizontal trading and then down to about 48. So if we were to come down that low and we were to measure that move down to this level of about 51, 51, 50K, that's a 30% correction. And that's what we did all throughout this bull run over here. 30 to 40% corrections into the 21 weekly exponential moving average. And we just continue to bounce from there. So for anyone who's sitting on the sidelines and wants to get involved in this market, if we do get a deeper correction for Bitcoin, that's your chance. Because if Bitcoin pulls back an additional 18, 20%, it will slam the altcoins and altcoins will be definitely a buy. Um, so yeah, there's your range on Bitcoin for any deeper corrections. As for flash crash or like any fantasy, whatever, you know, let it be what it is. All that matters to you is have your investment thesis planned, have a wealth plan in place, and then have your limit order set. That's all that matters. Um, but coming back to the stock market, I've been telling people that during this specific week, this week into next week, or actually specifically this week, is what we typically see is the highest weekly close for the stock market timed into every 12-year cycle. So to get a little bit more specific, it's about the year of the dragon. And when we zoom out to all past iterations, we get up to this March 26th week, correct, into June. Then we have over here in the dot-com bubble, we made it up into this March 20th candle, correction, pivoted in May. We actually did go up into a double top in, in August. Now we have over here, 1988. I'm just trying to do this fast for you guys. March 14th, correction into June. We have over here, 1976. March 22nd, correction into June. You're seeing the pattern, right? We have over here 1964. We got actually a little bit more extended, but look, the lower correction that we had in this rally was into the month of June. So pull back in June. Then we see here, this was topping out late March, but the highest candle close was a federal close was a fed March 20th. And then correction into April came a little sooner. Now, this is the, the deadly one. This is the one that we were showing that tweet of earlier, where still the same time horizon, late March into early April, and then big correction into June. So we also have data for presidential uh, years regarding the stock market, and April and May tend to be bad months in general, red months. Um, that aligns perfectly with this year of the dragon analysis. Um, it also aligns perfectly with the fact of we have a very overheated chart. So if I just looked at it from the technicals and where we're at, bro, the RSI on the weekly S&P is fucking incredibly overheated. And the last time it got up this high was before the C-19 crash. I'm just saying it's not waters above's opinion. All right. The whole market is overheated right now, including yeah, I... cryptocurrency and the speed at which it happens. So I wouldn't get too, you know... Um, I don't, it's no need to get super specific, but this is about as specific as it gets with regard to the top of the market, when it will correct into. And um, one last thing, just one last thing for everyone. We do have that data I just shared with you about a pullback into late May and June, right? Well, over here, we can see that we had very, by the way, this is the Bitcoin halving that happened in July of 2016. We were super bullish into the halving. And then look, we had a 40% correction around that halving and it came in mm. after the halving. So just keep that in mind, everyone. One month after the halving is late May, the same time frame we see the stock market every 12 years typically pull back into. And that would well, be the... Uh, sorry for cutting you off. Why is it that so many people say that we've never seen bullish momentum into the halving? That's just, that's not true. Yeah, well, the only time that invalidates that was the C-19 crash. But effectively, bro, we got up to 14,000 within a couple, you know, I mean, 44% sounds like a lot for the traditional market, but not for Bitcoin. I mean, this got real close to cycle highs before the halving. Now, the thing is, is that the whole, I'll, I'll quickly share this because this is another discrepancy, something that gets taken out of context. It's the hitting the all-time high before the halving shenanigans, Okay. Bro, we barely got above all time highs. Well, that's, barely. that's we were six percent above all time highs for like a couple of days, and then now we're on an eighteen. Yeah, we've had a full eighteen percent correction so far. But, but isn't it so interesting how effectively since twenty twenty one there's been a triple top kind of 
right? I, yes, I know. Just just excuse the extra little like uh, thousands of dollars that Bitcoin has hit. Uh, these are three key levels of resistance right here. Like yeah. back in April 2021, that was technically, I believe in the words of BC backer, that was technically with the underlying metrics, the high, the top of- I, I agree. Market. I agree. And, and despite that fact, the, the crypto market decided we're going to go to a new all-time high in November. Is it that's why that market was so hard to navigate? Because technically speaking, that second top, that new old time high we achieved in November 2021, that was not the peak of the bull run, but the price went higher. So right now right. we're seeing a pre-having new old time high that's kind of in line with the two previous all-time highs. And it kind of feel like a triple top to me. To a certain degree. Now, that yeah. doesn't mean I'm not bullish long term. Well, that is bullish. A triple top is technically a bullish thing. It's, bull like what we, it's what we saw with gold and gold broke out after. So, yeah. Now, the reason I say that is because just because we pull back a little bit because we're overheated now, that doesn't change anything. Correct. The year is bullish. We, we have magic left in store for us. Just be patient. We're trying to tell you what's likely to come based on the. It, and, and by the way, everyone should want to pull back right now. If you're yes, somebody who just wants up, absolutely, up, up, then get ready for this. Get you ready have, for a get ready for, you, have two, yeah. you have two months left and you're fucked. And then yeah, you're going to feel like FOMOing every day. So yeah, we needed a correction. I don't care because of what, you know, reason. It's just, and, and what I mean by that is because I, I'm aware that people just don't watch me. People watch me. They watch uh, blockchain backer. You brought him up. They're watching all these other analysts and like everyone is being compared to each other. And I think that's unsafe because look at what Bull said earlier. He said he traded his plan regardless. And me and him have a relationship. Like we're close. We're talking to each other uh, as friends off the camera. Bro, do you think I'm listening to you? with uh Absolutely advice on, on no but bro but but if you came to me with like real estate advice then i would be open to it it doesn't mean i'm gonna put go yolo all into the real estate market just because you know a little more than me though like i have to have my own plan but i do i do lean on or leverage on specialists i'm a ta specialist it's been working real well for me again right or wrong we're still making money and Again, there's context. So whenever there's any information about selling or investing, it's contextual. It's what's the overall picture. It's not just the little uh, you know, brush stroke in the top right corner of the painting. That's what we get held accountable for, and that's silly. So what you're saying right now is a truth. A pullback right now does not mean we're flipping bearish. It means we need a correction for a more bullish overall run Absolutely. and that would be that would be a gift i think for a lot of people yes um now one final thing to say because i know we're coming close and i hope you post this before the 25th no pressure but i think oh, this definitely is a, definitely okay yeah. this is a gem bro just really quickly so go back to the last cycle you see that we topped out on march 13th we corrected into march 25th now i'm going to go back here to this <laughs> correction here where we topped out in March, we corrected uh, into March 25th. Waters, leave me the fuck alone. Don't. No, watch, watch, watch. This oh, is great. God. So we corrected into March 25th. Now over here, we're going to the year of the dragon, the last year of the dragon we had in 2012, which Bitcoin was like one of the only cryptos trading at that time. So over here, I know this is really tiny, but we topped out in this micro cycle in right around March 13th, 14th. And then we corrected the lowest we went was March 25th. So I find it really interesting how right now we see that the highest we went on the daily close was March 13th, the same date. And we're correcting now. And I do assume that we'll, we'll keep pulling back into March 25th, given the cyclical uh, data. And also the fact that the RSI has a lot more room to go to the downside, but fascinating data point, right? Like the fact that we've gotten to this March 17th level in the past, which by the way, is the same thing that just happened. Look, we re look over here to the left, everyone. We retested all time highs in early March. Then look from breaking all time high, which let me see the exact percentage moves. We got above about seven, I think 8%. 
and then we correct it into March 25th. Well, if you go to this, if we go up from 69,000 technically, and you see how much we overextended, it's probably even less. Yeah, 6%, almost 7% up. And then we've corrected on the same fucking dates. So I just think that's interesting, guys. Like also March 13th was the lowest we went during the C-19 crash. Are we like reverse fractaling out of this because this was the Bitcoin having? So that would just be fascinating. Like if we were to correct now and continue into that March 25th date and we get below we get below 60k around that time frame i will absolutely start dollar cost averaging cuz i don't know if we can keep going lower but i'll I, i'm very clear about this dollar cost averaging because i'm going to leave some you know some dry powder because may is a pullback month in this particular year in these particular cycles that i've already showed you do this is golden data for people like i hope people take this for what it is because I know it seems a little a little weird and I know like there's a lot of information packed into this almost 2 hour podcast and we've talked a lot uh, about other things not regarding the market but we should definitely put emphasis on this analysis because it's undeniable it's there in the charts for you to see and what's so crazy is that after this is all over all people receive is March 25th waters above said we're going to crash okay did it which happen. I didn't say. Water. <laughs> <laughs> I never said crash. You know what's funny? Have you mm-hmm. ever heard me say the market will crash? Like I've never, I remember times where I might have slipped up with that, but there's never been that word coming out of my mouth. I don't use that terminology. It's just like, it's so silly. Market will crash. I don't know when. I, I, I've i asked people in the past, like, send me a sound clip of when I talk about the market will crash on this particular day or time frame. But I can find a million sound clips of me saying I'm bullish on the year of 2024. I think the market cycle top will most likely be after the month of September of 2024, leading us into Q1 of 2025. We could find a lot of sound clips of that. But please, anyone out there who's listening to this, you have a bigger audience than me, send me the timestamp and the sound clip of me saying market will crash on this day or this time. Well, they are they they are there. So if people really do want to find it, like please do. Know. We have AI technology. You guys could you we you nerds AI. out there use AI. Find the they, find the find the video. Find the time frame of me saying market will crash this time. Because how could you say both? How could you say so many times the market will be bullish in 2024 generally? Of course, there's pullbacks along the way. It's crypt. It's I mean, if we're talking about crypto, we all know this. But crash? How does pullback get translated into crash? Come on. Wisen up, family. I think that's it. That's all I have. Anything Beautiful. else you want to add, brother? Nope. We've been very specific, even though we didn't need to be, gave a lot of value. Um, I had a lot of fun just talking about, you know, investment thesis and just kind of like where you're at with everything and how you've been developing and expanding over the years. I think it's really amazing. And you, you've brought up to me some, some projects here and there on the sidelines. And, and, the, and I guess if I had one question for you to end this all off, you've brought up this project Proppy to me yeah can you can you share um just like a quick brief synopsis with everyone because i know my community will be tuning in into this too and i only ask because i've done ta on this project a couple times and it's just so limited in chart data for what i could find on trading view but i am aware that it had a prior cycle i believe in 2018 did it um i believe it's so it's been, been around, around right it's, it's been around it's had two different cycles yeah okay cool cool so yeah fill me in on why you're interested or bullish on this project yeah um they were the first real estate project in the world to have an actual live real estate transaction on chain occur and not only did they do that in kiev and ukraine they did that in three different times i believe in uh the state of florida here in the united states they're a clear market leader in tokenized real estate in my personal opinion and if anything else needed to be added to give additional confirmation to me. Um, Natalia, the CEO of Proppy, who I absolutely love to death, she's a workhorse and a powerhouse, has been networking unbelievably hard with the likes of Kathy Wood, Alvaro Nunez, um, Tim Draper, and others 
rubbing shoulders with the right people um in order to get property in front of the people they need to be in front of to reach a point where it could get adopted you know so they have the technology the first mover um the network and if this adds anything natalia is also married to michael errington which is like okay that's that's a pretty good connection to have as well on top of everything else so <laughs> that is why i like that project a lot yeah man that's dope that's cool that you know a lot about it and you also know about the people that are behind it and you you have a relationship with them yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i love them to death they're they're very they're very good yeah, I would love to get a long term chart for this because I see that it recently broke out and it's kind of holding up, even though we've seen quite a correction across the board in all coins. So there must have been some isolated news or something as of last Sunday, because They've over the launched... past 10 days, it's gone up uh, pretty much in a straight line. It doesn't look like the greatest chart. It's not a healthy looking chart. But yeah, I mean, it is also it tends, really uh, mm -hmm. it tends to move violently when it moves. It, it's kind of like xrp in that way except it's moved more often recently than xrp over the yeah i'll period. show everyone kind of one thing that i don't like to see on an alt chart you see how every pump the first day is the top and then it corrects pretty hardcore same thing here bart head same thing here and it went lower so it's like this type of structure first day big correction and now we're kind of in that vibe now so i'm wondering is this the impulse that will lead to an additional you know, here was a 50, 40 something percent correction. This was already at the start of everything becoming bullish. And this thing was still on a downtrend, 60%. So yeah, I, um, I would be fast. I, it would be interesting if I could look back at the last cycle to see how it moved and if it's kind of changed since, but this type of chart is venture capital. Like you really, uh, you really want to be certain of what you're getting yourself into. Cause these type of pump and dumps are violent, oh, yeah. but I do think tokenization of real estate is the future. That's undeniable. Absolutely. They'll probably, um, just because of the incumbents they're disrupting, they'll probably face some hurdles in that respect with some people trying to uh, throw quicksand in their way. The, like, that's inevitable. Like, the, yeah. Well, the happens. chart is just the chart. It has nothing to do with the underlying technology or the, you know, but, the projection of where the project's going in the future. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is one to look into a little further for sure dope dude we went well over two hours what a amazing time um needless to say it's always a pleasure to have you on i'll try to see if uh i can get this out within the next couple days as i'm going to australia within a couple hours i haven't slept it's 5 30 in the morning <laughs> this is the type of effort level i put in for all of you so just so you all know i appreciate yeah. you love you all to death waters you're amazing thank you so much um you blow me away with your perspectives time and time again um, i need to ask you more about certain things i'm not gonna lie but as we get offline to every single one of you i appreciate you we'll be back soon and if anything changes or anything new occurs um i'll be here much love everyone god bless